Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will understand what is blog in Pega. We have often heard that Pega stores data in blob format. What does that mean? How does Pega store this? What are the different data structures which are available? Today, we'll understand that and also go over what is the process of storing data within Pega. Stay tuned and let's get started with the video. Just to set the context right, I want to start by showing you the developer studio and see what exactly do we mean when we say data within Pega and how exactly does it look like. Let's jump into our developer studio. Well, I have logged into my designer studio and the first thing i did was just created a sample case which was service request and all this has is just one stage we don't need any complex data here i just want to keep it basic for easy understanding and what i have done is i have tried creating a work object by clicking save and run and this popped me up this window where i see that a service request service as hyphen one got created. Once the service request got created, the next thing I want to see is how exactly does data get built up for this particular work object. I would access my clipboard from the footer bar. I would go here and click on clipboard and this should bring me up the clipboard which you are seeing here. Let me go to the PY work page which is for this particular S1 work object. And let's try to see what do I see there. PY work page. This is the page which gets populated with the work object information for people who already understand what is Pega all about. And we see that it is pointing to the right work object as well. If you see, there is one feature which we have to notice here. That is from the actions tab, just click on show XML. And this pops us up a uh, data in XML format. I can shrink this here and expand. But what we have to notice here is there is something called as page data, start tag and end tag. That's how XMLs are represented. And lot of data, which is, you know, something not easily understandable because all that has is PY origin, uh, uh, user work group and stuff like that. A lot of that is what you have to notice here. All I wanted to show you here is how exactly Pega converted that work object data into XML. And this is what I see on my clipboard. This is our head start or a starting point for us before we understand what is blob all about within Pega. Let's jump and go and understand what are the different data structures which are available with this basic understanding. Well, let us see with that understanding of how exactly the clipboard got populated in XML format, which was quite unclear and confusing because so much of data which got generated for that work object. Let's see what are the different structures which we have. So if you go further in understanding what are the different data types which are there, are there's something called a structured data. There's something called as semi-structured data. There is also something called as unstructured data. Well, you would be asking, what is structured data all about? Structured data is anything, for example, your first name, your last name, your date of birth, something which can be mapped to a table. We have seen that when we try to create data types within Pega, we see that that gets mapped to a table, to a relational database table, and then there are columns against each of those tables, right? For example, could be first name, last name, and if it is string, usually the names are strings. If there is a S no value, you, you would map it to a true or false. And then you can capture that and stay with, save it in a certain structure within a database table. That's what structured data is. As the structured data gets stored into these tables, we can easily query them using the structured query language. And it's easy to understand also because they are on the tables mapped against each column well with that understanding let's understand what is unstructured data or semi-structured data 
Semi-structured data is anything like a XML file. For example, the, the clipboard page which we saw, we were able to see that in XML format, which was semi-structured. It did have structure, but it, it was inside an XML file. In the same way, any spreadsheet data also is a semi-structured data. It doesn't have a complete structure, but there is some structure to it. And what is unstructured data? For example, your video files, your image files, your mp4s, your social media, emails, all this come and roll up under unstructured data. This is data which doesn't have any structure. Well, to store unstructured data, we need data types, right? So what are those data types? For example, the first name, last name can be stored under the string data type, the varchar data types. But for unstructured data, you need a specific data type. To be so that we can store them and that is nothing but blob let's understand what that means and with that well what is blob blob stands for binary large object like the name itself tells it stores binary data zeros and ones right it is typically could be anything from a xml file a image file or an audio file Therefore, significantly, it would need more space compared to your first name or last name because those are structured data or they are integers and characters which are small. However, this is unstructured data or semi-structured data and PEGA takes this particular approach to store the data. Both for unstructured and structured data, it uses this particular uh, data type, blob data type to store that data into the database well, the next question would be how does pega actually store that data how does pega do that you know how does pega use blob to store that data something which we have to understand for that is a column which is called as pzpv stream in all of your work object tables or work tables if you see here that this query is showing me a work table and a certain column which is called as pzpv string and if you see it is showing that binary data is saved in that which means the data is getting saved as a blob whenever you try to create a work object we saw that xml that xml got stored into the database in the sense pega saved that into the database as a pzpv stream blob data type right this is what we are seeing here Well, Pega follows a certain process to store this data. What is that process? It does something like this. How does it store it? We saw that XML, the XML which got generated when the work object was created. That XML would be obfuscated, compressed, encrypted, and then stored into the DB like we saw that column in the previous slide. Well, what are these, right? What, what, what do these? terms mean kind kind of complex right let's try to demystify or break this into much simpler terms and understand every work object which gets created for example has to go through something called as obfuscation obfuscation word seems kind of too complex to understand but what it means is making the data unclear or making it more confusing like we saw there that the data the name for the data started with something called page data because that was a XML which was unclear, which is not easily understandable. You can't look at that and say, this is what this data contains. Why? Because Pega has obfuscated it, make it made it unclear and not easy to understand. That is obfuscation. And then what Pega does is in the next step, it compresses it. These two are, you know, mandatory steps, which you can't skip. By default, it happens, right? It compresses it using some utils or some libraries which are which comes as part of Java utils and then it reduces the size to one third before it saves. The last step is encryption, of course. Encryption is not enabled by default, but you can use the Pega platform to encrypt by enabling a certain DSS value or you can use your own custom cipher. If it is more sensitive data, you can use a custom cipher to encrypt it. But on a whole, this is the process Pega uses to save the any data in a blob format onto the database.
let's head to understanding what are the advantages of this well there must be some advantage why anyone would use blab of course one of the major advantages are it helps you compress a lot of huge data into smaller chunks and you know reduce the overhead of storing a huge chunk of maybe an audio file or a video file it helps you with that compression and there is no size constraint as such it's easy to manage any complex structures you can for example a work object data is a complex structure you can put that into one blob and you can manage that right and you don't need a dba specifically a dba to manage those database schemas which easily gets managed by yourself if you see we are able to manage these schemas as well and you can easily access that using obj methods which is what is faster access to each and every object and as you move further also you can take those objects and migrate pretty easily right and you can expose only those columns which are kind of necessary and of course it helps you with faster development that's how it enables agility this is what i had this was a very quick video to help you understand what is blob all about in pega hope this helped you understand the process pega chooses to store data in a blob format we'll of course try to cover how exactly we can use user defined functions in my next video if you have liked this content i would strongly recommend to subscribe and share this content with your friends as well drop us a like and also drop me a comment and you can scan this code and get in touch with us if you want to get trained with us catch you in the next lecture